The word Satan refers primarily to two things, the desire to do evil and the spiritual being created to incite evil. Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih Rabi Rahimahullah explained that this quality of going wrong or a desire to do wrong, that quality is satanic and that quality is in every man. Now there are possibilities. Number one, that this is Satan and that's all that there is to it. There is no personification of Satan as such. And then there's another possibility that like the system of angels who control goodness, there may be some evil forces created by Allah Almighty of which we don't directly know, but which are responsible for promoting all the forces of evil within man and controlling them. Hazrat Muslim explained this definition in several places. He said that every evil inclination, the source of which is unknown, is referred to as Satan in the Holy Quran. This is because it is a result of subtle thoughts and the root of the word shaitan indicates to such a being, that being that creates doubts from afar. Sometimes this word is used for that evil spirit that is the initiator of the means of evil in opposition to the angels. Explaining the concept of the evil spirit that incites evil, Hazrat Muslim Allah explained that Satan, which has been created for the incitement of evil and is an invisible being like the angels, he does not himself come and speak with people, he does not come in bodily form and cause people suffering. People who lost the status of righteousness as a result of their actions become the reflection of Satan. It is their actions that are attributed to Satan. There are other incitements to evil aside from this. They are also referred to as Satan. For example, the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that my Satan has become Muslim. For this reason, Satan only told the Holy Prophet ﷺ to do good. The meaning of this hadith is that the means that become an incitement to evil for ordinary people were a means of his progressing in goodness وسلم, because of his perfect righteousness. The meaning of this hadith is not that each person has a separate Satan and that the separate Satan of the Holy Prophet وسلم, had become a Muslim. If this were the meaning, then why would the Holy Prophet وسلم, have sought refuge with Allah from Satan? The reality is that the actual Satan that is still existent in his original condition is still there. However, the state of those thoughts and emotions that support Satan had become Muslim for the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Huzur described that there is a separate being, a spiritual being, whose responsibility it is to incite towards evil in the same way that the angels invite us towards goodness. But Satan being evil does not mean that he is deserving of punishment or he is at fault. Only those beings who have free will and then choose evil will be punished. Those beings who have been created for evil are only fulfilling their responsibility. Huzur explains that the inciter of evil has been created to test man. He could only be punished if he fails to incite evil. The question can arise that why then is Satan called evil? The answer is that being evil is one thing and being deserving of punishment is something else. Huzur explained that we do not throw excrement away from our house to punish it, but because for it to remain is harmful for our health. The same is the case with the inciter of evil, which is Satan. He is the representation of illness and of sin. So he will necessarily be called evil. Despite this, he is not deserving of any punishment. Under him, there are many manifestations which are from among men and from among the jinn. Those evil spirits who have not been created for evil, but they incite evil after having preferred it and chosen it, or those humans who have not been created for evil like Satan has been created for evil, but they incite evil after having preferred it. These people are Satan and Iblis according to their stages, and these are the ones who are deserving of punishment. So the very existence of free will demands that there be a force that draws us to goodness and a force that draws us towards evil. For there to be an independent spiritual being that calls us towards evil is not unusual. If there were none, then we wouldn't even have free will. If it was only angels who were calling us towards goodness, then we would only do goodness. So it is necessary that when free will exists, there should be something pulling us towards good and pulling us towards evil. And in the wisdom of the creation of free will, it was inevitable that Allah Ta'ala create a being who calls us and pulls us towards evil. That being is evil. But that being is doing according to the will of Allah Almighty so that the concept of free will can exist. And while that being may be evil, but that being is not worthy of punishment.
Now this doesn't mean that the forces that bring us towards goodness deserve a reward. The angels of Allah Ta'ala don't necessarily deserve a reward in paradise because they didn't really choose to do goodness. They didn't never had the option to do evil. Nor does it mean that the forces of evil deserve punishment. They're obeying the commandment of Allah Ta'ala. They didn't choose to do a certain goodness or reject a certain goodness and in disobedience turn towards evil. Rather, both forces are fulfilling the purpose of their creation so that free will can exist. Hazrat Muslim who wrote that neither can the angels derive pleasure from heaven, nor can Satan derive pain from hell. Satan is a being of fire. Can a brand of fire find pain in fire? So that is its place. Thus Satan going into hell does not mean that he will be punished. Rather he will go to the place that he belongs to. If the angels go to paradise, it will not be because of any reward. So in the same way, Satan will not go to hell because of any punishment. Huzur explains that some people object as to why Satan will be sent to hell. He says that the answer is that about Satan it is said that you created me from fire. That's what Satan said according to the Holy Quran. So for something that was created from fire, for it to go into fire is no punishment. If you place coal into fire, then what punishment is it for that coal? Huzur further explains that the creation of Satan is subordinate to human beings. Regardless, whatever Satans are not humans, will not be deserving of punishment because they are fulfilling their obligation. As a filthy thing in this world is not worthy of any punishment or being questioned as to why it's filthy. Similarly, the Satans who are not human, they are not deserving of punishment. However, those humans that are Satan, they are certainly deserving of punishment. So Hazur gave this example of filth. Filth is something that we throw away from our homes. We look at it with disgust. We clean it off of ourselves. So filth is something that is not punishable, though. That's just its nature. A human being who has the option of cleanliness and filth, who chooses to be filthy, of course, he is accountable for his actions. But the filth itself is not deserving of any punishment because it is filthy in and of itself. Now, as there are different ranks among angels, there are also different ranks among satanic beings. The evil spirits that manifest the will of Satan are referred to in the Holy Quran sometimes with the terminology of jinn. As if Muslim Odrizilawanu explains that the word jinn is used in the Holy Quran to refer to many things. First, the word jinn refers to those evil spirits that incite satanic thoughts in the same way that angels create angelic motivations. They are the helpers of that Satan who is the inciter of evil. This is derived from the verse in Surah An Nas where Allah Ta'ala teaches us that Allah Zi Yuvasvi Sufi Sudur Nasi min al Jinnati wa Nas. This means that I seek refuge from those who whisper into the hearts of men, from among the jinn and from among mankind. The word Satan refers to two main categories. One is the desire to do evil as the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that Satan circulates in a person like blood. Then the second is the evil spirit that is the opposite of angels, which draws a man towards evil and which is helped by spiritual beings referred to as jinn. Now in ignorance, people have come to believe that Satan and jinn can directly harm them. And this leads to superstition and the false idea of being possessed by Satans and jinns and the need for exorcism. Satan and jinn have no power whatsoever to do any harm to man directly. They can only incite man to choose harm for himself. So these beings were created only to allow for the concept of free will, never to interfere with the concept of free will. So it's a great irony that Muslims, or some among the Muslims, have understood Satan and jinn as the very opposite of the purpose for their existence in Islam. They think that Satan can possess a person and force him to do evil or force him to do things that's outside of his free will. So this is an absurdity. This is superstition. This has no foundation in Islam whatsoever. The whole purpose of the creation of Satan and of the jinns that work under Satan is to create within us a desire to do evil so that then we have a choice between good and evil. So the concept of Satan and jinn as it exists in Islam is to enhance the concept of free will, not to diminish our free will or to deprive us of free will. So any interpretation that talks about diminishing or depriving us of our free will, that is superstition, that is false, and it goes completely opposite to the entire philosophy of Satan as Islam has taught. So such people think that Satan and jinn can possess a person and deprive him of his free will, whereas Islam teaches that the very purpose of our creation is for free will, and the purpose of the creation of Satan and jinn is to allow for the concept of free will to exist.